even put the large church to a place where you just a church. How about that? But and the, and the titles didn't mean a thing because we weren't going anywhere. And still to this time, was not really not going to any major events um, and conferences and all this type of stuff. So I think what God did is He put the emphasis back in loving our church, Amen. loving your local church, loving going back to the beginning. We talked about going back to the basics so much, but God sometimes He will make us go back to the basics in his own Amen. way. Amen. So Amen. here it is in Hebrews 11, Hebrews 10, rather, 23 to 25. I want to read. Um, and this is the NIV. So it may be a little bit different. Uh, anybody, NIV says, hold fast, unswerving to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing in other words we've gotten a little comfortable again i don't know if you heard me when i said that we got comfortable sitting on our couches you know when the church became became your living room um uh, and, and even for me for a little while i only had to put on a jacket and a shirt yeah i had on pants and i had on pants but i had on a jacket and a shirt and i was preaching in in this room here but 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 then then i had to get up and move and get back to the sanctuary eh? because that's Amen. where that's where the fellowship is in the sanctuary and we know that 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 uh, just coming to church is not it. It's more than just coming to church because you can come to church and still not be together. Right. So Christ wants us to come to church to be together uh, in the fellowship, not only in, in 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 the physical, but also in the spiritual spiritual wise as well. Not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more you see the day approaching. Not just because pastor superintendent or the bishop says come to church but because the day is coming where christ is going to judge us where god is going to judge us and we need to make sure that we've been doing our part as believers coming together and strengthening one another you cannot be strengthened at home alone you cannot be strengthened by yourself i know many are uh, get to the place where they say well i read my bible myself i i can, I can talk to god myself well, that's not the way that God set this thing up because he wanted us to be in connection with us, with one another, in fellowship with one another. Do not lose hope in the purpose of going to church. Right. Do not lose hope in the purpose or the reason for going to church. I still believe in the church. Anybody yes. on here still believe in the church? Man. Anybody here still believe in the, the, the promises of God? Uh -huh. yes, the standards yes, of God, yes, yes. Uh, the, the reason why we come to church, the reason why the, the benefits of coming to it. I'm going to talk about those privileges in a minute. I'm a church boy. I come from the country. Yeah, little town, big old town called Williston, Florida. Y'all say it's little, but it's a big town in Williston, Florida. 2,500 <laughs> people all together. Yeah, that's right. I come from a place where we we slaughtered hogs and and, and killed goats and yeah, ate crackling and, and fresh sausage. From the hall. I come from a place where they had country church where they beat the big drum with a big wooden stick mm -hmm. uh, yeah. board and, and, and had the had the tamarind with one symbol hanging on it back to up, but we had the one, but we had some church with yes. that little tamarind. God is saying, I want us to get back to the place where we have church like that because all of the entertainment is taken away for all me. It's taking it away from me. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have the organ going. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have all of the streams and the videos and stuff going. But if it's taking the place of Christ, if it's missing the reason why Christ, if we don't forget that Jesus is in the house, why are we doing it? Mm, right. We come together to fellowship and lift up the name of who? Jesus Christ. Jesus, if yes. I be lifted up, then I'll do what? Draw all men no. out. Fill our churches. I will save your marriages. I'll save your home. I'll save your jobs. I'll give you money. I'll bless you more than enough. But you won't learn how to get the money unless you come and learn how from the man of God or the woman of God. You got to come to a place where you can be fed. Hmm? You got to you got to come to a place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the church is still important. I'm a church boy. I grew up in a place where we went to church. My grandmother drugged me to church. I was a drug addict because she drugged me to church. She made me go to church. I didn't have a, I didn't have a choice. I went through the week to Bible study. I went I went to the, the saints' houses and praying with my grandmother. We riding around. I was a prayer warrior at four years old. Y'all come on here. 
didn't know it, didn't understand it. But I was praying. She was laying oil and laying out folk in their house. I'm like, what is going on here? Because the people believed in the fellowship of church. They believed yes. in coming together. They believed in what God could do. And if you just got a little, if, if belief meets a little bit of your faithfulness, God can do some great things. Hallelujah. So we just don't show up to church. Showing up to church is not enough. You got to come to church with here it is an expectation. Yes. You got to come expecting yes. God to do something extraordinary and supernatural. If you are a believer, you should possess this hope. If you're a believer, if you've been born again, if you've been washed in his blood and all of these great things, we say, well, there should be some hope in you that believes in the church. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope. Listen to this real good without wavering for he who promised is faithful notice that we are called to what hold fast all right we're called to hold fast hold fast to what to the promises to the standards to to the word of god to what christ has said this means we are to in, to be intentional about maintaining and holding on to something we are to never let go or better yet let let go and let god in our life why? Because we're letting go of the things that have caused us to stumble or caused our ears not to hear what the man or woman of God is saying to us in the church house. So I'm telling you, it's more than just coming to church. We come to church to get uh, infused. We come to church to get refilled. We come to church to get more than what we had before we got there. Yes. Hallelujah. Because if you already got everything, there's no need for even Christ. Every one of us is dying daily and learning more of Christ. I don't know about you, but I want more of God. Matter of fact, just yes. put your hands in your living room or wherever you may be and say, I want more of God. I want See, more when we get to the place of wanting want more, more of God, then we, we make it accessible for him to come in and do some supernatural things. But if we ever get to the place where we've arrived, and we know everything well there's no place for god as i said earlier we're coming to church but have we forgotten that christ is there too mm -hmm. or did we leave him outside with the parking attendant oh my christ needs we need to meet christ in the building together how good and pleasant it is for brethren to, to come together in what unity well yeah. christ is in the unity he's the glue he's the thing that sticks to us together that brings us together uh oh that wants us to come together our hope is not found in a friendly society nor is it found in any external circumstances but rather it is found in our confession so we got to make some confessions tonight do you want more of christ do you want christ to be the head of your life do you want christ to infuse you with his joy infuse you with his peace infuse you with his understanding he'll open your mind he'll open your reasoning he'll change the way you think he'll change your thought process he'll give you a behavior and a hunger that hungers after him but that's all in your confession. What is our confession? We confess the gospel of Christ. Our confession that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yeah, to the glory of God. The hymn says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. That's a hymn that we should know. That's a, that's a hymn that we should quote daily. Ah, yes, my yes. hope my life my my everything is is on the hinges of jesus christ my hope that's it we are told not to lose hope no waver because he who promised is faithful christ god is faithful to us even when we're not even faithful to ourselves even when we're not faithful to each other christ is still faithful. you know what that man did the bible tells me while we were yet in our sins he died my god today he came i like to say it like this superintendent he came from a good place to a bad place just to take our place ain't that something he Amen. didn't have to do it but he did i hear the old time say didn't have to do it but he did he came to a horrible place he was sitting at the right hand of the father he did not have to leave his his his, his heavenly throne but he came because he, he he heard about dr williams 
Oh my God. He heard about Sister Sarita. Yeah, he heard about Sister Kathleen. Oh my God. He heard about Sister Lynn. Y'all ain't talking to me. He heard about uh -huh. Minister Williams. Oh my God. Then he thought about Superintendent Feathers and Superintendent Cobb said, I got to get out of here and go see about my folks. I got to go see about my children. I got to go see about them because they need me. So while we were doing everything we were big and bad enough to do, while we were still scooting and booging and throwing it out the window and, and going out there and catching it on the other side, Christ died. My God. I don't know about you, but I ain't been saved all my life. He had to okay. save me from a wretched place. <laughs> but, 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 but I came to Jesus <laughs> just as I was. I was weary, wounded, and sad. But in him, I don't mean to preach, y'all. I'm, I'm trying to go talk. Ahead, go ahead. I found a resting <laughs> place. And him, ah, yeah, he has made me glad. Did, did he find any of y'all? Did, did, did he have yes, to find it yes. by, by the road of Damascus? Did anybody have to have a Damascus experience? I don't know about you, but Paul wasn't the only one. We, we, we had a Damascus too. He had to change us because we was on the road to destruction. But he came while we were in. I said, my God, he's faithful. Christ yes, is faithful. Yes. He's steadfast. His love is everlasting. His love never ceases. Isn't that wonderful that no matter, no matter, and even though we're in this pandemic, for some it may seem like Christ has forgotten about us. It would seem like Christ just done turned his head uh, on the church. It would seem like he's upset with us, but no, he's not upset with us. He hasn't turned his head. You know what Christ is doing? He's testing us. Yes, yes. This is a testing season. He's trying to see, do you still love your church? Uh-oh, do you love God? You don't love God. I love God. What's wrong mm -hmm. with you? Y'all know what the song say. You need to understand that Christ is testing your faithfulness. He's testing your relationship. He's testing where you are and who you are. He, he wants to know, do you remember who you are and who you are in this season, in this season of restoration, in this season of rebuilding, in this season of reconnecting to the God who saved us in the first place. But don't forget that if he's done it before, he can do it again. He's faithful. Great is your faithfulness. He who calls you is faithful. He, he, he will surely do just what he said. He promised it and he will come through. Listen, listen to this. Hebrews, Hebrews tells us in 10, uh, 19 through 25, it talks about this, uh, that the coming together, how important it is. And we should never forget uh, the assembly together because there are some results of this. And the results of it, there are some privileges in our faith. The, road, the result of the operation of the new covenant in believers' lives is highly visible transformation of their behavior. In other words, your behavior changes when you are changed by him. Mm. Your patterns change when you are changed by him. Your thought process and your reasoning change when you're changed by the changer. My God, today, yes, it so flows from an inward change of attitude, which is not dependent on outward circumstances. Believers must become highly motivated to do just what Christ says in order to reap the benefits of what he's already promised. Amen. Mm. Hey, Sue, you've I got to Minister become William got a question. motivated to do what he says in order to reap the benefits of what he's promised. Mm. In other words, there's some prerequisites to getting these blessings. There's some things that you've got to do before he gives you these blessings. God's not just going to hand out things to somebody that's undeserving. But if you're willing to, to hold out, if you can go through this season, because I want you to understand something, that even though this pandemic is going on now, Many of us have been dealing with some personal pandemics before this pandemic. So, so there's no need of us acting like, oh, this is brand new. Going through is not brand, through, brand new for the believer. The Bible tells us that all that live godly shall suffer. So you're going to suffer some things. You're going to go through some things, some vicissitudes of life or some unexpected challenges that will come your way. But the believer, because of the hope that's on the inside of you, you still win. You still win even when challenges come, even when your haters rise up, even when people slander your name, talk about you like a dirty dog. There is hope in you that says you still win. 
If you hold your peace, let him fight and you don't fight. The Bible tells me in Chronicles that that, that, that there was a time that, that Joseph Jehoshaphat went to the battle and, and, and the, the enemies had surrounded him and his armies. Oh my God. But then the prophet tells him, well, be not afraid because this battle is not yours. We've got to understand that the battles that we're facing are not ours. Matter of fact, the Bible tells him to go on down to the edge of Zids. And all I want you to do, I don't want you to go down there cussing. I don't want you to go down there fussing. I don't want you to go down there swinging your sword and throwing rocks. All I want you to do is lift your hands or open your mouth and begin to praise God. Matter of fact, if you begin to praise God right now, he'll shift some stuff right now. The Bible says, I dare you to say what it says. The Bible says that as they begin to praise God, that, that, that God turned the enemy on themselves. Yeah. That yes. God sword on sword. <laughs> yeah. That the God so. began to kill him on self. And when the men of God began to look around in the valley, when the dust settled, there was a carcass of bodies, a, a carcass of people that had killed themselves, but they kept on looking. Everybody said they kept on looking. They kept on looking. I'm telling you, what well, the kept church on will get if you do what he says do. Ooh, when this pandemic is over, when the storm passes, the Bible says that they kept on looking and then there were some spoils in the land, hallelujah, from where mm -hmm. the enemies had brought some stuff, but because they're dead, they can't use it. Oh, come on now, come on now. The Bible <laughs> already told us that, that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. If yes, you just yes. live right, if you just hold out, if you just hold on the name of the Lord, he's gonna give you some spoils. Spoils. Matter of fact, the Bible said they wouldn't begin and pick up the spoils, but it took three days to get the stuff. Woo! Spirit is just start picking up some stuff that you lost in 2020. Go ahead, just start grabbing some, start pulling some stuff Ooh. down. Scoop yes, up some things that just, I don't care what it was. The stuff that you lost, if it's meant for you, God said you're gonna get it back. There's some yes. stuff that you lost that you don't need no more, but there's some stuff that you lost. God said you're gonna get it back. Come on, everybody say I'm getting it back right I'm now. I'm getting it back. I'm getting I'll it back do. right now. I, I don't mean to preach super tell you, you you get me you get on me late okay <laughs> but God wants us to understand that this hope is in us yes. this hope is in the believer it's an inward conviction but it's an outward display of God's goodness hallelujah it's an inward conviction but it's an outward display of God's goodness if we can get it right on the in-house if we can get the in-house right Mm. God said, there's no good thing that I'm going to withhold from you. So all I need you to do is just do right within. Mm. Yes, do right yes. in your private world. Mm. Do oh, right when, when the lights are off and the, and the doors are closed. Dr. Williams said it like this, when the lights are off and when the doors are closed, what then? In other words, I can't see your thoughts, but God see them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't see what's in that closet, but God can see. Matter yes. of fact, go ahead and give God praise even in your closet. Ooh, give him praise even in your alone time. Yeah. Don't allow the enemy to work, set up workshop in your mind. I know that it's tough. I know that it's rough. I know some of y'all ain't, ain't got your stimulus yet, your stimulus. And if you got your stimulus, it still ain't enough. God want to give you more than that. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, I wish <laughs> I had some help here. That's why you take that stimulus, get that one for it and give it to your church first. And he's going to give you more than y'all ain't this. Y'all ain't listening. Uh -huh. I just thought I just throw that in there. Yes. <laughs> Hebrews. But believers have more than, comp than, a, than a competent spirit. I'm almost through. They are also reminded we have a great priest over our house, over the house of God. We have a great priest. All, all that he's saying here is that uh, about Melchizedek, the priesthood of Jesus is called here. Believers have not only the competent spirit, but they also have a competent advocate. So you can go to the Father when you get in trouble. You can go to him, your intercessor, your mediator, and he'll work some things out. But that's only the privilege of those of the household of faith. Mm. Those that come together, those yes. brothers and sisters that make that sacrifice every Wednesday night, every Sunday morning. Ooh, there are some privileges and some benefits to you coming and fellowshipping with your brothers and sisters. Yes. You yes. have an advocate. Come on, scream in your living room. I got an advocate. I got an advocate. 
I'm about to lose it in this chair. I have an advocate that's working on my behalf. I got an advocate that's working and praying. My God, don't you know that in John is coming to me now? Help me, Lord. John says that God, Jesus said, I don't pray that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them while they're there. And mm -hmm. in other words, I don't want them to cheat. I don't want them to sneak past. I just want you to keep them because the devil is there. He's looking around like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. Old relationship try to pop up. Old booger that you done got rid of 20 years ago, pop up out of nowhere trying to make you think that is good there. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. It's good then. It surely ain't going to be good now. Everybody say, loose here. I got to lose him. Lose him. reminding me that better is, oh my God, is the end of a thing than the beginning. Your yes. latter going to be greater than your former. Don't you know that God wants the best for his children? Don't you know that God wants the best for the believer? The believer has some benefits. Write that down. The believer has some benefits. The believer has some privileges. Yes. yes. Ooh, getting too excited here. He's, he's available. He's always, his phone is never busy. You, you won't get a dial tone. You're going to get Christ when you call him. When you call on him, he'll answer. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Yeah, see, that's why you got to know them old song. It's good yeah. with all the contemporary stuff. I love it. That's good. But every now and then you need to pull up a Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell, tell him, him what, what you want. want. Every now and then when you get in the jam, but Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Every now and then when the enemy come in like a but Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you see, 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 you got to understand that the songs of old came to help the saints. Yes, yes. They help them get out of a jam. Everybody scream, God, get me out of this jam. God, uh, yeah, get me out of this jam. Then Christ, woo, the advocate, whoo, he hears your prayers. As the wick of the lamp continues to draw oil for the light, so let us continually draw from God the strength and the and the lamp that continually draws the oil the light. So let us continually draw. This must be done sincerely with pretense. Mm -hmm. We must continually seek after him. Matthew 6 and 30 he says, seek ye first the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom. The, the house of God, the church is a part of the kingdom. So this is why we come there to seek more of God, to seek a word from the man of God. You pray for your leader that God will shower him and fill him with the word or the, or the lady of the house or the missionary or whoever's speaking that morning, the minister, that God will fill them with the word that will bless your life for the rest of your life. Amen. A Amen. word that will bless your life for the rest of your life hallelujah. Yes, yes, hallelujah. Yes. this means this means uh just what it says without guilt having cleansed from the conscious by reliance on the sprinkling of the blood of jesus christ uh and the integrity of the blood the pureness of the blood it cleanses us and it washes us that which we are seeking when we're seeking him when we're seeking him and we want more of him that means that we want god to do just what he said just what we praying, just what we're believing. Don't go to God and doubt him. Don't go to God praying about something, then you doubt it when you see it. My God, if you're going to ask him for it, believe that he's going to do it. Believe yes. that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. You got to believe that. Don't you let the devil make you feel like it ain't going to happen. Don't you let the devil make you feel like it ain't going to come through. I don't care how long it's taken. It's going to come. It's going to happen. Uh-huh. Just nod your head. It's going to happen. Yeah. In, in matter of fact, any day now, I'm looking around. I'm looking I'm, I'm looking out my window. Any day now, any something day. great's about to take place. Come on, clap your hands and give him praise. <laughs> though, 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 it can be tough, we still trust God. And at the end of the day, let us encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching, the destruction of the temple and of the city of Jerusalem were just around the corner. The empire seeth with unrest and premonitions of disaster. These frightening omens were not viewed as signs of God's inability to control his world, as many interpret similar events today because of the pandemic. Because what's going on, it just seems like, oh, things are it's bad. It's terrible. It looks like a bad omen and all this stuff they used to say. But the devil is alive. This is only what God has allowed. 
Yes. And he won't put no more on us than we can bear. He's making a way of escape even in the middle of this. Yes, many have died from this virus. Yes, many have gone on. But because you're here, you should just lose your mind right now for about 20 yes. seconds. To give yes, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It, it could have been another day. Hey, hallelujah. Yes. But yes. the grace of God, it's his hallelujah. grace and unmerited favor. No one could know the hour. No one knows when. But we should be readying ourselves. We should making our, be making ourselves ready, watching and doing what Christ has ordered us to do. Yes, Believing yes. in the promises of God, standing under the blood, staying under the blood, trusting his word, trusting what he said, being obedient to it, expecting his return at any day now. We don't know when, but we live like we know. Mm. Yes, yes. We don't yes. know when. But we live like we know. We we live in expectancy that he's coming any day now. Hallelujah. And I'm living so. I'm living this life to live again. Again, we're in a pandemic. But many have been in personal pandemics. We have all been dealing with things before COVID. And, 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 and God has kept us and preserved us. God has been faithful and consistent. So he expects what he's given. If he's being faithful and consistent to you, he needs you to be faithful and consistent to him. Yeah. We must remain faithful and consistent. We can't give up on the church. I'm closing here. We cannot give up on the church. We can't give up on each other. I know we're not in here, but look across the screen and say, I'm not giving up on you. I'm not Hallelujah. giving up on you. God is I'm not giving up on you. will bless your faithfulness. Yes, yes. God is, and he will bless your faithfulness. The church uh -huh, has this, we, 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 we sometimes don't have enough grace on the church as we have our own, our own selves. Sometimes we are harder on the church than we are individually. Sometimes we put a lot of restrictions and red tape on the church, but we want a whole lot of freedom within ourselves. So mm. what Christ is saying, show the same grace to the church as we do ourselves. Yeah. Keep believing in yes, what the yes. church stands for. Keep believing. Stop finding flaws and find the way. Yes. Stop looking for what's wrong and point out what's good. Hallelujah. Be genuine. Be strong. Be a defender of the faith and your church. <laughs> It's amazing how we can we can tally up so many wrongs and forget how the goods have preserved us. The church yes. has been good. Matter of fact, the church ain't never did nothing to nobody. Mm -mm. People do. People hurt people, but the church has never did anything to anybody. Be intentional and dependable toward one another. Be there. If nobody else show up to church, you show up to church. Matter of fact, make that declaration with your own self. If nobody else do, I'm going to. Nobody else do. I will. Love your church. Hold your head up. The church depends on you. God is depending on you. Your leaders are depending on you. And God is depending on your leader. My God today. Speak well of your church. Hallelujah. Speak well in the community. Hold your head up. Victorious faith, that's my church. It's growing and thriving. If you don't see it before you see it, you never will see it. So you got to see it even in a barren place. You yes. got to see your condition turning around even if the enemy has spoke ill will toward you. You got to, you got to, you got to have some word for that devil. Say that he's a liar. If God be for me, who can be against us? Man. God has greater for the believer. There's benefits for the believer. All things work together for the good to them that believe. That's purpose on your life. Every one of you lift your hand and say, I got purpose on my life. I got purpose on my your life. Your leaders, your pastors, your first lady, believe in them. Believe in them. Let not just others say things, uh huh, and you don't say nothing about your own church. Love your church. Defend your church. Build intentional relationships within your church. 
Build intentional relationships outside of your church. Intentional conversations. Be intentional about speaking to one another, not just on Sunday morning. Get rid of that Sunday morning, Sunday morning fake stuff. Be real Monday through Friday. God is looking for folk that are real Monday through Friday. Because Sunday is easy. All, but all of us can look good on Sunday. All of us can shape up pretty good on Wednesday night. But it's the Monday through Friday. It's the off days. Look at the neighbor say, in the off season, how you working? In the off season. How you doing in the off season? On those off days. My God. Let not Sunday be the only time you fellowship or speak to one another. Love your church. Give regularly to your church. I'm closing. Time, talent, and treasure. Giving grows your church, not just financially, but also for yourself, of yourself. Show up, be on time, be accountable. Take the load off your leaders. Let them rest. Let them do those things that are more important for the ministry instead of doing everything for the ministry. Y'all ain't talking to me. Extend their life by knowing they can count on you. Extend your leader's life by knowing that they can count on you. That helps us live longer when we know we got some folk we can count on. Man. I come from a long line of church folk. My grandmother, my great-grandmother, my great-grandfather, they were all church folk, mothers and deacons in the church. My grandmother was a district missionary in the church. Yeah, my mother was a usher in the church. My, my aunt was an uh, evangelist in the church. I had them all around me. I was circled. I couldn't go nowhere. So I, I, I couldn't help but become a church boy. But I want to let you know that I love my church. And you need to love your church. I want every one of y'all to declare with me, I'm a proud member of Victorious Faith Impact Church of God in Christ. I'm a proud member of Victorious Faith. I, I, I didn't just join this church. I was born in this church. Y'all just put a latoon in your throat now. Put a latoon in your throat. I'm a holy <laughs> member. I'm a, I'm a holy member. Sanctified member. Sanctified. And I'm proud to be sitting on the corner wow. of 823 Hudson Avenue where my pastor is. Ah, the one and only. <laughs> Superintendent Wayne Coburn and my first lady, come on here, is Lady Vicki Coburn. And I love my church. Matter of fact, matter of fact, don't let nobody talk crazy. Matter of fact, when folks go to talking crazy, you better let them know. You better tread lightly because that's my pastor. That's my first lady. Huh? I'm defending and I love my church. God bless y'all. Love you so much, sir. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Put those hands together. Come, y'all can open up your phones. Amen. Put those hands together. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Any questions? Any questions? Ooh, Praise God. Praise so, God. I tell you, awesome. that was awesome. 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 Does anybody have? I know, Mr. Williams, I saw your hand earlier. Did you have a, a question or a statement? No, sir. Hey, Amen. I think you saw the hands going up, Sue. You 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 was you was on it. We we were just agreeing. I, uh -huh. Our heads up, but I, I would let you do something. Would would you would you offer the prayer for us uh, on tonight? Absolutely. Well, Father, we thank you now for everyone that's on tonight. We pray, Lord, that we've said some things that will be beneficial. Pray, Lord, that they will take root in the hearts of your people. Yeah. Pray, Lord, that they know that this is from a pure place, and Lord, that you've given it to them to enrich their lives, to grow their church, to grow their, their leader, to, to bless their leader, to bless their first lady. Thank you, Jesus. I speak life. I speak more life. I speak abundant grace and blessings over victorious faith. Every member, every girl, every boy, every child, I speak blessings on their life. Thank you, Jesus. Eyes Thank you, Lord. Ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered the heart of men the things that you have in store for victorious faith. Impact your God. Do it now. We're expecting you to do some great things. Restoration, even in the 2021. God, everything yes. that has been lost in 2020, God, give it back to every believer. There's some privileges yes. that you're bestowing upon your people right now. Thank you, Lord. We, Thank we you, Lord. It, we believe it. It's in Jesus' name. Heal right now. Heal everybody. Mm -hmm. Heal everyone that may be sick. Whatever the cause may be, God, you're able to heal, deliver, and set and free. Set. It's in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank God. Thank you. And amen. God bless amen. you. Amen. Amen. amen.
Hi, I'm Lady Colbert of Victorious Faith Impact Ministries. And I'm Superintendent H. Wayne Colbert, and we invite you to our virtual celebration Sunday mornings, 1055 a.m. And as always, Grace for, for Impact. impact.